Hello and welcome back to NV Fine Art Studio. Today we are talking about paint consistency. This short practice is a part of this week's lesson on my Patreon. In addition to real-time demo, I did a little tutorial for my patrons with examples of most common paint consistencies, how to achieve them, how to identify if it is a correct consistency for a particular tonal value and for a particular wash. I also demonstrate a messy example to show you how the incorrect consistency can affect the painting. Most believe that it is muddy colors or opaque colors responsible for dirty looking washes, but not really. Most of the time it is the incorrect paint consistency. So if you think you struggle with this, head to my Patreon, the link will be in the description below. Today I will be using Midden Baohong watercolor pad, 100% cotton, 300 GSM, cool press. If you want to try this out, I have a 10% discount. The code is also in the description below. Now I'm going to show you a very quick uh, example. It can be used as an exercise as well. Uh, and I'm going to paint an imaginable landscape, very simple landscape, just sky, maybe something in the background and the foreground, just very plain, maybe sandy or uh, whatever in the foreground, it doesn't really matter. Then we're gonna have a, um, a bush, something or maybe like a taller tree and maybe a few bushes under that tree. So the sky, the background and the foreground will be uh, first wash, a uh, very light tonal value and the consistency will be coffee. So very fluid consistency and light tonal value wash. And the second wash will be the bushes, the tree, and all these little bits and pieces that you usually paint in the foreground, just to set the scene, basically. So this is the first wash, and as you can see, the mixture is very runny. Pretty much I'm painting straight from the bowl because the water is so dirty. It's already, it's already like a first wash. Now I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt blue and ultramarine into that gray mixture. I'm not increasing the tonal value, I'm just changing the hue, the temperature of the mixture. And this is done to make the sky look a bit bluer. Now I'm preparing a very little puddle of warm mixture, same value, same consistency, but a very little puddle and this this is to ensure that there is not enough mixture on my brush and it creates this dry brush mark. I used yellow deep and cadmium red light for this mixture and just a touch of that gray mixture at the bottom of the palette. Now I've added more water and more yellow to make sure that there is enough mix to the rest of the uh, wash, but that doesn't look like so adding more water and finishing the wash. Now I'm going to paint the background wet on wet. Now I'm going to use pretty much same mixture for the background, except I'm adding a bit of white because I want it to be hazy and feel like background in the distance. So this is a, a cool mixture of uh, cobalt blue, maybe a bit of yellow or red, uh, just to make it a uh, bit gray and also a bit of white and neutral tint, just to make it gray basically. But the biggest difference is that I'm going to actually touch the tissue before putting this um, very fluid mixture onto the paper. Now I want to clarify the importance of touching the tissue. So when you have a very runny mixture, uh, and you touch the tissue, you reduce the amount of water on your brush, but you preserve the lightness of the mixture. If you don't touch the paper, you risk having too much water on the brush and risking having the blooms because there is a chance that the mixture on your brush has more water than the paper. But if you start trying to create the thick mixture on the palette, there is a chance that it might be a bit too dark. Because as soon as you get into 50-50 proportion of water and pigment, you start getting into middle tonal values range. 
So the first wash is finished and it's dry. Now let's check where we add with our tonal values. This is my tonal value chart and it looks like the background mountains are around tonal value 5. But value 5 is a middle tonal value and if we want to have any sort of highlights on the trees in the middle ground we will have to leave the paint, we will have to remove a bit of value in those areas. And that's what we're going to start with. So I'm going to rewrite the areas for the highlights. So it's going to be this bush. I'm going to use tissue to leave this area. And we're going to do a second bush on the other side as well. Now I'm going to grab yellow and add it wet on wet. And this is going to be my highlight for the bushes. Now I'm going to use the spray bottle and spray the whole area. And this will help me with, first of all, keeping the second wash wet for longer. And secondly, when you spray the surface, the, paint, the paper accepts the paint much better in a much more uniform matter. Now I'm going to prepare the middle tonal value mixture for the tree foliage and I'm going to use yellow deep cadmium red light and a bit of cobalt blue. I'm looking for a warm green olive type of hue and if you actually compare this consistency to the one we used for the first wash, it's still runny, it still forms the bean but it's slower, it sticks more to the palette. Um, and milk consistency is usually it's approximately 50-50 water to paint ratio and it usually gives you tonal value somewhere around 5 and 6 so it's slightly lighter tonal value and it's good to start with this tonal value and this consistency because first of all it's, it's more watery so it stays wet for longer and then it means it's also lighter so you can start from a lighter and that's what we usually do in watercolor we start from lighter and paint then darker so we start from a lighter areas of the tree and now I'm preparing a cream consistency mixture so it's still in the um, middle tonal value range but it's slightly darker I'd say it's probably um, one maybe one and a half step darker I've painted half of the shape and now it's a good time to spray this area once more. I know this size of paper is small, it doesn't require actually spraying, I can paint it in one go, but because it's a demonstration I'm showing you a typical example if I paint it on a larger a scale. So it's quite important to spray while you still keep working on the shape. I decided to add a pine tree to the right, the same cream consistency, and also I changed the mixture to milk consistency and I used a bit of yellow together with red and now I'm painting some fallen leaves and things, some, some details basically on the ground. At this point the second wash is done so I'm drying this and then we will add a few last touches with the darkest darks with the paint straight out of the tube. And at this point I'm actually changing the brush to fully synthetic Skoda Perla and this is because first of all we don't need that much water, we don't need water at all and secondly because this brush is stiffer and the paint is thicker so it's really really hard to actually paint with soft natural brush with paint consistency straight out of the tube. So here we are the finished sketch, let's check the tonal values, the darks are close to 10, the middle value is around uh, 7, 7, I went definitely a little bit darker here just to make sure that it stay, it stands out against the value 5 in the background, so this is our value 5 for the background. And this is value 7, so we still have two steps difference. And this is our highlight, and highlight is around value 3. So this is a perfect combination between the tonal value 3, 7 and 10 in the focal area. 
this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I shed some light on this topic of paint consistency. Don't forget I have Patreon with over 80 demonstrations. Each demo covers a particular topic similar to this one. So if you want to learn more or just paint along with me, please find me there. The link will be in the description below. Happy painting! Until my next video. Bye.